Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do CSS transitions on this image slider that we made in the previous video. Um, I do know I cut the other video a little bit short. Um, I didn't do the CSS transition, so I didn't wanna leave you all hanging there. So I decided to come back and add some transitions. And there is a library that we're gonna be using called React Transition Group, which you can install. Um, if you go over here, it tells you how to install it. But this library is useful for kind of like adding CSS transitions to React because React, you know, obviously renders and destroys things from your DOM and it makes it a little bit more tricky to render things that are dynamically being added. So with this library, you can go ahead and import it up here. So I'm going to say import from that library and you have the option to import two components that we're going to be using. There's transition group and there's also CSS transition. So let's just go ahead and import both of those. And in order to get this working, you have to wrap the elements that you want transitions to apply to um, by simply doing a transition group. And then inside of that transition group, you want to put a CSS transition. And uh, let's just move that up. Okay, so the CSS transition takes three properties that we're gonna be needing to pass in. The first one is a key. So this will just tell React to re-render this CSS transition when our, ima when our image index is changing. Um, otherwise, the image won't actually uh, do any type of transitions. The second one is a timeout. So this is how long this transition takes. We'll put 100, or we'll put 1,000 there for 1,000 milliseconds, which equals a second. And then finally, you also have one called class names where you can pass in the class names that you want to kind of append CSS transitions to, if that makes sense. So let's just add a slide right. And at this point, what happens is that it gives us the ability to style a class called slide right. So if we go to our CSS group, actually, let me, let me show you something real quick. So if I were to type in cookie and inspect this image. Notice that when I click on this right arrow, it adds some classes. So you can see slide right, enter done. While it's doing it, you have slide right, uh, it's hard to read this, active. And you also have slide right, exit active and stuff like that. So we're gonna style the slide right, enter and the slide right, enter active. So if I go to our slider CSS here, I could say slide right, enter active and then also a slide right enter. Okay, so for these transitions to work, what we wanna do is visualize what happens when a new DOM element comes into the page or a new image comes into the page. And what we wanna do is we want to kind of position it to the right over here and then slide it in. So these are what the slide right enter and slide right active do. And just to tie it all in, if you go back, um, if you remember for class names, we put slide right. And again, that's what is allowing us to just say style slide right enter and slide right interactive. So when the image slides in from the right, we want the position of the image to be moved over to the right somehow. So we can use a transition and we could say translate X by 100%. So that'll move the image to the right um, by 100%. So if I click this, notice that it does get moved to the right. Um, now for the slide right interactive, this is basically what the end state is of your transition. So we want it to be positioned in the 0%. So be positioned exactly where it needs to be. And then in order to get this to work, you have to add a transform to it. And we can... Um, I'm sorry, I'm messing this up. <laughs> uh, instead of transition here, you do transform. Transform. So tutorial's already off to a really bad start. And then transition. And for the transition, you the first parameter or argument or whatever is the actual property you wanna transition on. So I'm gonna say transform. And I'm gonna say give it a thousand milliseconds. I'm gonna say ease in out. So hopefully at this point, if I click that button, it should slide in. So you notice that the image, the new image did slide in from the right. Um, and the other image is kind of sticking around. So they handled the case where the other image is kind of just sticking around. 
um, we could do some more CSS styling. So we could do slide right exit and slide right exit active. So the difference between these two is the exit is basically taking the existing image and we need to do something to it, right? So the existing image needs to be in position 0% so that it's just right where it needs to be. And then we need to slide it negative 100%. All right, so now if I click this, notice that um, the current image is sliding to the left and the other image is a little bit hidden. Now the other image is hidden because we don't have any type of like absolute positioning. So I'm gonna actually gonna add a uh, um, image wrapper. Uh, I don't have Emmet installed. So I'm gonna add a class called image wrapper and that is going to wrap all this. Okay, and then for image wrapper, I'm gonna give that a position of relative so that I can give the image wrapper image, which is defined up here, a position of absolute. So this is kind of CSS trickery, and I don't know if there's a better way to do this. I gone down broke it. All right, so now when I click it, notice that it is sliding in, but our buttons are all messed up now. So we probably want to give this wrapper a fixed width of like 200 pixels. And then we probably also want to text align. Something is not being text aligned correctly. Probably this. There we go. All right. So hopefully that works. So we're almost there. Now notice that the images are kind of being displayed outside of this wrapper. Like if we wanted the wrapper to be something that's containing the images, we could add, um, I'll add a five pixel border just so we can visualize this. And let's give it a height of 200 pixels as well, or 150. All right, let's see if this works kind of, not really. All right, let's not give it a border because that looks ugly. So here what we want to do is basically say overflow is hidden so that we can't see these images slide out. So now when we click it, the images actually slide in. Um, obviously this looks terrible. So my CSS skills suck, I'll be honest with you all. But the thing I'm trying to drive home is the JavaScript code, right? So one thing I notice is that when you click on the left button, it's actually sliding in the wrong direction. So in order to fix that, we have to do something special. We're gonna have to keep track of the direction that we're going and we can use we can do that using a state variable. So I can say const direction and set direction is equal to use state of slide right. And instead of hard coding slide right down here, I'm going to um, pass it direction. And this will make it work exactly as it did before. But what we wanna do is we wanna change the direction based on if they clicked on the slide left or the slide right. So at the bottom of these functions, I'm gonna say set direction of slide left and then over here, I'm gonna say set direction of slide right. So now, if I click on the left button, it's still going to slide in the wrong direction because we haven't yet added a slide left style. So I'm gonna copy all this and duplicate it, and we're gonna figure out how this needs to um, basically slide in. So slide left, enter, interactive, slide left, exit, and exit active. And this is gonna do the opposite, right? So when we enter in from the left, we need to be in a negative 100 pixel position, and we go to zero. And if we're exiting, we're gonna be in zero, and we're gonna to go to 100. Okay, so I hope that all, does that work? I think that should work. Okay, so now we're sliding to the left. Now there's one issue, is that when you change directions, it's almost like it's keeping track of the initial direction first before it actually corrects itself. And this one took me some debugging to figure out and there's something that you can pass to the CSS transition group or to the transition group and it's called like child factory, uh, yeah, child factory. So in order to fix this issue, I can't really explain to you what's going on but you have to pass it a child factory property and I'm gonna just go ahead and create a child factory function that takes in direction. 
So up here, we can say const child factory is equal to a function that takes in direction. And this needs to basically return another function that takes in child and returns a react dot clone element. You give it the child, and then you also give it the, uh, I think class name, class name is direction. I think that's how you do it. I'm trying to go off memory here. I can't explain why you have to do that. So if you go right and you go left, it's still messed up. I think it needs to be class names maybe. All right, so go left, go right, okay. So the way React works behind the scenes is that like, although we're setting the direction of the slide left and slide right, the DOM elements I don't think are getting properly updated until the next React render or tick happens. So I think this is like a little, a workaround or a hack to kind of force it to have the correct class names before React decides to re-render the page. If someone else can explain that better, um, I had to search in Google for a solution for this. Uh, but this is saying you may need to up apply reactive updates to a child as it's exiting. So if you find it that you have to do something special like this, you might need to use something called a child factory. So that is how you do CSS transitions in React. This is probably one of many ways to do it. It's probably not the best way to do it, but it works using this library. Um, Obviously you could style this and make it look nicer. I need to actually refresh my memory as to like how to make this locked in, but I mean, it, it works. It would be nice if this was like a fixed width and height window and the images were contained in it, um, but I'm not gonna get into that. So if you like this tutorial or video, uh, give me a thumbs up, leave me some comments, leave me some suggestions. Again, CSS is, CSS is not my, uh, my strong point. So yeah, if there's anything I did wrong, feel free to call me out. All right, this is a Web Dev Junkie video. My name is Cody Seifert. Thank you so much for watching and look forward to new tutorial videos in the future.